realize if you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. And welcome back to Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Denisha Boston-Hill, along with Ray Schwartz. And our guest today is Lou Panicelli, conductor of Nassau Pop Symphony Orchestra. Welcome back, Lou. Thank you. We're so happy to have you here today. It's just the sweet sound of music. <laughs> now, in someone's everyday life, there's always stress. But when you turn on the dial and you listen to music or you pop in some music on iTunes, ooh, how sweet the sound. You, you start to relax. Yes, it is. <laughs> So you have a lot going on. We look at your bio. We've looked at your calendar of events. Talk to us a little bit about what's going on with the Nassau Pop Symphony Orchestra and what you have on tap for your upcoming shows. Well, um, our largest uh, opportunity to reach people of Long Island is through our summer concert series. Uh, We're doing eight concerts this summer. Uh, in various parks all over Nassau County. We'll be at Eisenhower Park. Um, Our home base is in Mineola, and uh, they've recently uh, constructed a brand-new amphitheater at uh, at Memorial Park in Mineola, and we're going to be appearing there twice this year. It's a beautiful facility. Uh, We've been performing in Mineola since 1985 every every summer. So we'll be there twice. Uh, We appear in Lindbrook. We um, venture a little bit into Suffolk County at Heckscher Park, and we appear on their soundstage. We'll be in Valley Stream. Um, One of the great things we'll be doing this summer is uh, in the town of Oyster Bay at Syosset Woodbury Park. We're going to be working with Strawberry Fields, which is uh, one of Long Island's uh, Beatles tribute bands. Uh, The orchestra has um, a number of orchestral settings of the original Beatle tunes, and we'll be working uh, with Strawberry Fields, accompanying them on uh, all of the great hits that that the Beatles did. Oh, that's really cool. That's always a fun concert. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like it. Uh, seeing your seeing the orchestra uh, at night uh, on the outside, I mean, it's it's a magical experience. So I certainly encourage anyone who hasn't done that yet to to make sure they do it. Um, in addition to that, though, one of my favorite events uh, annually is your appearances uh, that benefit uh, UCP, uh, United Cerebral Palsy. Can you talk to us a little bit about your your work with them and how that started? Right. Well. Um, Again, I have to uh, credit Mom. She uh, was a a volunteer member of the uh, Cerebral Palsy Auxiliary in Valley Stream. And we were thinking of doing charity benefits. And uh, she said, why don't you contact the people at Cerebral Palsy? Maybe you can get something going with them. And I did. Uh, We started back, uh, oh gosh, this We've done 13 concerts, annual concerts for them, uh, and we perform at the Tillis Center. We uh, reach out to corporate Long Island, and uh, as a matter of fact, NEFCU is one of our, our major sponsors for these events, and uh, thank you, Ray, for uh, helping us with that. Oh, it's our pleasure, mm-hmm. and it's, it's, an, it's an astoundingly beautiful event every year. Um, you know, certainly the orchestra, certainly the um, sub, the celebrity guests that you have uh, that perform with you. Yeah, we've we've had some really great people to work with. Uh, we've worked with um, Joe Piscopo, who's uh, formerly with Saturday Night Live. He does a great uh, Sinatra show, and uh, we put a, a full saxophone section into the orchestra to do that. It really helps helps the <laughs> orchestra to swing. Um, this past May, we worked with um, Linda Etter, a um, very popular female vocalist with a, with a great voice and a, the sweetest lady that you could ever possibly think to work with. And uh, she just uh, wowed everybody. We worked with her actually twice. This was the yes. second year we invited her back because she did such a great job. And uh, I just loved working with her. She was terrific. Um, some of the other events we did, we had Strawberry Fields one year, as a matter yes. of fact. I think that was the first concert we did for Cerebral Palsy. Um, 
one of the, one of the great concerts we did too was with a Liberace impersonator, <laughs> and, and, and this man was incredible. His his technique at the piano was every bit as good as Liberace's was, and he had all of these great outfits, the fur coats and uh, the sequins and things lighting up. And he was just uh, a lot of fun to work with. He he had a lot of the original orchestrations that Liberace worked with when he worked with symphonies. And um, it, it was challenging music to uh, to rehearse and to finally perform. But he was great. He walked into the audience and the girls were all stroking his fur coat and everything. And he really played it up and he had the big rings on his fingers. I don't know how he was able to play the piano. I know as a pianist, you probably can appreciate that. He had these gigantic rings on his fingers like imagine. shaped like pianos. And But he, he played beautifully. That was a lot of fun. We had um, an impressionist from Las Vegas named Bob Anderson. He came out to mm. do a concert with us one year um, it's just been it's just been a joy and um, every year at the concert a group of singers from the life options program at cerebral palsy joins us they're called creation they're four young people um, with cerebral palsy and uh, they have a, a really great talent for singing and we bring them out and um, they actually sing with the orchestra uh, and backing them up I remember the first year that they came on, they were a little nervous. It was the first time they were sitting in front of so many people. The Tillis Center holds 2,200 people. It's a very large theater. It's a great venue. Um, and um, every year they got more and more confident. And, um, and you could just see the excitement that was generated uh, with their families and the people in the audience when they, they sang different songs. Uh, we would sometimes try to get them to uh, pick songs that were thematically going along with what we were doing. And they always rose to the occasion, always got a standing ovation. And uh, that's what it's all about, just letting uh, letting a different type of audience know the great work that Cerebral Palsy is doing at their center in Roosevelt. Creation is truly, it's an amazing thing to see. And it, it's very hard to keep dry eyes <laughs> watching. I can't wait to see. <laughs> it's so inspiring. Uh, their spirit is there. It's just an amazing event. They, so. they really are. It's another thing, really, everyone needs to experience. Mm-hmm. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio on the voice of NAS Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston Hill, and our guest today is Lou Panaciuli, conductor of the NASA Pop Symphony Orchestra. Lou, what advice um, would you give to a business owner? I mean, I would assume. You know, being a conductor, being a teacher, you've had a lot of experience kind of directing a large group. How would you liken that to a business? Well, being a conductor these days is is not what it used to be. Um, it used to be somebody would hire a music director for an orchestra and they would study the music, go out on the stage and conduct the orchestra. Right. A conductor is far more than that these days. Um, at the level that I'm at and certainly at levels going into the professional symphonies like the New York Philharmonic or the, uh, various orchestras, professional orchestras that you see uh, uh, peppering the United States and all different states. Um, they have to um, be community-oriented. They have to help with fundraising. Um, there's a lot of uh, public relations that are involved with being a conductor. You just have to be out there doing a lot of different things, understanding how the orchestra works, um, what the orchestra needs. Uh, sometimes you're dealing with unions. Uh, it's it's a very multifaceted kind of a position now. It's not just picking up your baton and waving it. So what I'm hearing is it's kind of a lot like a business in that you get into a business thinking you're going to get into it for, you know, if I like coffee and I'm opening up a coffee shop, I'm going to be making coffee and having others enjoy it, you know. Um, Uh, But it's it's far more more than that. that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you're wearing many hats. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, good to have the right team around you. Absolutely. So, Lou, music is so authentic, especially when you're leading an orchestra Mm -hmm. and technology is moving at lightning speed. How do you take the two and come, you know, mesh them together to so that you're not left behind in this digital age? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you to back up a little bit because a, a symphony or a concert band, the, the, it exists on its own. 
Uh, once you start digitizing things or adding electronics, you're taking away from the 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 joy and uh, of of live music. Um, violins and woodwinds and brass are beautiful on their own. You really don't need to change it. Um, I know a lot of uh, recordings are done now and amplified or just fixed in recording studios. But when you hear a, a live symphony, there's, there's something very magical about that. Um, we don't need electronics. Maybe a microphone. Right. That's about it. Are you utilizing like social media to expand the reach as far as oh, your absolutely. events? Oh, yes, without, without a doubt. Um, we have a, a Facebook page. Um, my son is a uh, um, an IT director at a company in New Jersey and uh, very savvy when it comes to computers and different things like that. And, of course, he's constantly on his iPhone and sending right. messages and tweeting and <laughs> all the different things that young people are doing these days. Um, he set us up with a Facebook page, and um, he's the webmaster of our uh, uh, our web address, which is NassauPops.com, by the way. Uh, we always post our uh, schedule and directions to, to all of our performances on that page as a listening lounge. We have excerpts of music. Um, so to that extent, we, you know, we are using social media to, to reach out a little bit. Um, we have a personnel director. Um, who handles all of our publicity. Um, she sends out um, maybe 50 or 60 press releases every time we do a performance. We have our newsletter that goes to over 5,000 people on our mailing list. Uh, it's a yeah. full-color newsletter, which I just Yeah, gave you this here. is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're going from word of mouth and really bringing crowds out and traditional you know, marketing to utilizing digital and social media to reach the masses, is right. what it sounds Th like to me. That's, that's exactly right. But I, I don't want to change the music. No, uh, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. We've got to keep the music. Mm -hmm. If the recipe works, there's no reason to change the ingredients. Well, uh, <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Lou, what's your, what's your proudest accomplishment in the work that you've been doing? And, you know, th think about what, what you want to close with and to let our listeners know about what's your proudest accomplishment. Well, if you don't mind me saying so, mm -hmm. um, I think that um, God's gifts to us are not for us. Uh, they're for others. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of the fact that um, I've been able to take the gift of music and to work with all of the musicians in the Nassau Pops, many of whom are teachers. Uh, teachers are giving people to be able to take all of these elements and all of these beautiful people that I work with and to put them in a situation where they're helping other people, um, be it cerebral palsy or various other charities that we've had the opportunity to work with. Uh, one in nine breast cancer charity here on Long Island. Um, Special Olympics, we did concerts for them too. Uh, to, to do something good and to help them achieve the goals that they're trying to achieve. I can't think of anything better. Oh, so touching. Thank you. I'd like to leave you with what I call DB's philosophy. The music business is the art of business. Love what you do, and you will always enjoy the sound of music. We'd like to thank our guest, Lou Panachuli, conductor of the NASA Pop Symphony Orchestra. Thank you for coming to the show today, Lou. And thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. We'd like to thank you for being with us. My name is Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston Hill, your co host and producers. The creative director of Tower Talk Business Radio is Rudy Breedy. This is a NASA Community College Foundation Business Leaders Council production. Visit ncc.edu slash WHPC for more information. Available as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. This has been Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the NASA Community College Foundation on the voice of NASA Community College 90.3 WHPC. We'll talk to you next week.